Okay, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna take a sidestep from Excel, and we're actually gonna work on creating a program template in Google Sheets. Google Sheets has a lot of um, powerful features, and we're gonna put those to the test today. Okay, so let's get started here with Google Sheets. Um, what I wanna create today is sheets similar to what we've created in the past in Excel, where we have the ability to select an athlete here at the top and their updated maxes will appear here in the bench squat and deadlift and then we'll have a little helper cell here then you have the ability to select um, the exercise order the category you want to select the max that you want to use the max value will populate here and then the exercises that you want to select from so what I've done here is I've created actually um, a blank one and we're going to get to work here so the first thing that you need to know is you're going to want to create another sheet to house all of your exercises, athlete data, all that sort of thing. So I've created one here down at the bottom called settings. And you'll notice I've actually set it up very much the same way that I did for the powerlifting program um, video that we made earlier. In fact, I just uploaded my powerlifting program one that I had created earlier to Google Sheets and then I had to make a few changes. So I'll talk about the changes that I made and anything else that would work from the earlier video. You can just go back and watch how to do it in Excel and all of those changes should carry over to Google Sheets. So the first major change that you have to know about Google Sheets is anytime that I talked about in Excel formatting as a table, that's not possible in Google Sheets. So when we actually have to select a range, we will actually have to go in and select the whole range. So for example, this athlete one is in cell C4, so it's C4. So if we wanted to select this range, we would go from C4 all the way to F7. So that would be this whole range. You can see that it all highlights here. And I've set this up quite the same way. We have the name, bench, squat, deadlift, and you can put your athletes in here, A18, athlete one, two, three, four, um, put all their bench values in here. Then the next um, box you're going to want to create is actually your exercise categories box. So upper, lower, arms, etc. Whatever you want it to be. It can be knee dominant, hip dominant, um, vertical push, vertical pull. However you like to categorize out your exercises. For the sake of simplicity, I've just gone with upper, lower, and arms. And then the next biggest change that you're going to want to make is for your actual exercise categories, we're gonna to have to make name ranges and that happens just a little bit differently in um, Google Sheets. So what you're actually gonna to wanna to do is go to um, data, named ranges, and you'll see on the side here, it opens up a box called add a range. And I've already done a few of them here. So let's go through um, our upper named range. So if I click on that, I'll actually, actually we'll add a new one here. So we'll go add a range and you can see it gives me the option to name the range. I've already named one upper, but we could easily make this upper. And then when you actually select the name range, what I like to do in Google Sheets is just select the whole column. So for example, here it just says um, J um, double dots J. And what that means is, is it's actually gonna take this whole column. The interesting thing about Google Sheets when we start to do our drop down list is it doesn't show any spaces. So if we take this whole column and we do a named range, when we go to select it in a drop down, it's only really gonna show the upper bench press, decline, lat pull down, chin up, and overhead press. It's not gonna show any of these other spaces unless we were to put um, some values in those. So you can actually feel free to make your exercise list as big as you want and take the whole column. So that's one of the changes that you're going to need to be aware of when you start to make your lists in Google Sheets. So this is how you're going to want to set it up. So again, just so you don't have to go back in the video, you would just go to data, named range, and you can create an athlete name uh, named range. So I've done that here. I've done an athlete underscore name, and then it refers to settings, and then name, um, yeah, so C3 to C7. Mm -hmm. And then I've created exercise categories in the same way. If I edit that, you can see that it refers to um, H4 to H6, and that takes over upper, lower, and arms. 
and then I've created one for each of those categories, upper, lower, and arms here, and that takes over the whole column. Okay, and then with any, just like any time you're using named ranges, it's really important that you keep the spelling the same and you can't put any spaces in the named ranges. So you can see when I did athlete name, if you look over here, it's athlete underscore name. Whenever there's spaces, it's not going to be able to um, pull those values back out. So it's important to take the spaces out of any named ranges that you want to use. So if you were using knee dominant, it would be knee underscore dominant or hip underscore dominant or however you like to term your named ranges. Okay, so that's how you're going to want to set up your settings page. So just to reiterate, you're going to want to use um, the full ranges when we're doing our lookups and we can use named ranges here and here and then when we're doing our exercises list the best way is just to do columns. So we'll close that off and we'll go over to our worksheet now. So in order to make a drop down here, um, the same way that we did in um, our Excel videos, we're going to have to use a data validation. So we go to data, data validation and the box that we're going to actually use just looks a little different. Okay, so it asks you what the cell range is and we want the, the worksheet and then it is only going to refer to the first one, so D3. Um, and then criteria, you go list from range, and we've already termed that, so we go athlete underscore name, and then there's a check mark here for um, show drop down list in, in cell, and that's what's going to allow us to drop down and select any of our athletes. Um, and then if you want it to only be able to use the ones that are in, or the athletes that are in the named range, you hit reject input, or you can put show warning if you want to be able to type a name in there. Okay, so I'm going to save that and what you'll see is just in the same way that it works in Excel, I can do my drop down and I can select any athlete and I should be able to pull their data into there. Okay, so that's how you do a drop down list in Google Sheets. So again, just so you can reiterate it's data, data validation and then you work through the settings here. Now, in order to pull out the, um, the data, for the bench press, squat, and deadlift. Remember we have their max value saved in this table here. We just use a VLOOKUP the same way that we did in Excel. And the VLOOKUP formula works the exact same way. So I'll show you what the, the formula is here in this box. So if I click on the bench press, remember we wrapped it in an IF error so that if there was an error, it was gonna show a blank value. And it looks like this, VLOOKUP bracket D3, which is referring to the athlete name. So it's going to look up the athlete name and then it's going to look through settings C4 to F7. And if you remember, when I talked about this box, you have to take the whole box. So it's C4 to F7. So it's going to look through this whole, um, this whole chart to find the value that we want. And then it's going to take, for bench press, it's going to take the second um, column. Because remember, if you remember our chart, it's athlete name. And then the first one is bench press. So it actually ends up being the second column. I'll show you what that looks like. So column one, column two. So there's the second column. And then it's going to um, reference that. And when it's false, that means exact match. And then when we hit that, it looks like that. So then if we want to do that, um, if we're looking for bench press, the second column, squat is the same formula, but the third column, and deadlift is the same formula, but the fourth column. So you can see that whenever I actually select a new athlete, so athlete two is two, 201, 202, just so I know that I'm selecting the right one, three, 301, 302. So that's how that works. Um, the reason I'm doing this Google Sheet video is because I got a question from an email about how to do the dependent drop downs in Google Sheets. And what that means is that I want to be able to select my category and then based on that category, select um, the exercise that it refers to. Okay, so how that's actually going to work is I'm going to need to use a formula. So you remember in the actual Excel videos, I use the formula indirect to turn this into a named range so that I could see, um, so that I could use that to select the actual exercises in the category. Well, indirect function doesn't work in Google Sheets, and that's the reason 
that we've really ch that I really wanted to do this video in Google Sheets because that's the main difference between the way that we are going to do this in Google Sheets versus the way that we did it in Excel is the indirect function. So <clears throat> to select the cat to create the categories box, it's the exact same as when we just put the drop down in the athletes box. We would just select the cell, go data, data validation. Um, we want SCT. Uh, worksheet E9 is the one that we're going to put the thing in or put the uh, validation in and then a list from range we're going to use the list exercise categories drop down and then I actually set it to show warning so that um, if I wanted to I could just type um, something in there and it would work just fine so save so that now works so we can select arms up or lower okay and when we select that the exercise categories named range is referring to these three here and this could be as long or as short as we wanted it to be to select any of them so we know that that works now the way to actually do um, this data validation is a little bit different so I can't use an indirect function so what I'm gonna do is actually create more boxes down the side here where I pull the um, values in. So I'm going to use this unique formula. Okay, so here's the key. It's going to be unique array formula. So let's turn it into array and then we use the indirect function to turn it into the named range and then we're looking at this cell here. So let's type that formula in and see what it does. So equals unique U-N-I-Q-U-E and then we're turning it into an array, so we use array formula, A-R-R-A-Y, F-O-R-M-U-L-A. And then we need to pick which array we're going to use, so bracket again, and indirect. to Because indirect now um, turns a name kind of into a string. And then we select our cell, so we're, the category we want to select from is E9, so where we select the um, category over here, so E9. So we type that in there, we're gonna close all these brackets off and hit enter. And what you're gonna notice is it's gonna pull in the whole arms category. So if I were to select upper, it's gonna pull in the upper category. And if I were to select um, lower, it's gonna pull in the lower category. So that's good news for us because now we can do a data validation here and actually select from this. So this is going to be dynamic. It's going to change based on the category that we select. And we can use this one to have a drop down of all of these values. So in, a, in, a, in essence, it's going to work the exact same way as the indirect function in Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to data, data validation, and cell range. Okay, so SCT work, uh, worksheet. Um, H9, so this cell here, and we want a list from range, and we're going to use this range here. So I'm actually going to select it and draw a box all the way down here. And you could set this how, however you wanted. You don't have to have the categories along here, but I did this so that the video is easy to follow around. You could easily just make it a column. Okay, and have it to show warning, show drop down, and save. So what you're going to notice is if I select upper, all of these values have been pulled in over here. I should be able to select any of the upper body exercises that I have saved. Let's say lat pull down. If we were to select arms, you're gonna notice that I'm able to pull in any of the arm values. And if we were to select lower, I can select any of the lower values, okay? And just to show you that that's working, we'll go back to our settings and I'm gonna add one way down here and let's call it um, seated overhead press. So I'm going to save that value in there and that's in the upper category. So we go to SCT worksheet, um, upper. You can see it takes all the spaces out and then I should be able to select seated overhead press. So then any values that you put in these lists here will be selectable on your main sheet. And you would just need to create one of these boxes for each one of your um, spots where you want to input an exercise and, that, and that'll work for you um, quite well. So that's a way to get around the uh, dependent drop-down lists in Google Sheets. There's some other ways, but this is the, um, the simplest way that I found to have it working um, right away. So if you're enjoying these videos, 
Um, it would really mean a lot to me if you could uh, like and share them. You can find me on social media, um, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at DSM Strength. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.